Hunting Kind was set up by me in my bathtub after a couple of sherries earlier on this year, going pretty frustrated, let us say, as a result of the leaked hunting uh, webinar news. Terribly unfortunate. Uh, but every cloud's got a silver lining, and Mark Hankinson, as you know, was exonerated, cleared on appeal just last week. So all the people that banned trail hunting licenses, National Trust, United Utilities, Forestry England, NRW Wales, I'm sure there's another couple of pantomime villains in there that I've forgotten. Uh, I hope I said National Trust, but I'll say it again. And, you know, I looked at what was going on behind the scenes, and I kept getting this great line from the Countryside Alliance is, quiet in the cheap seats, don't you guys get involved, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So I had a little look behind the scenes and I spoke to some politicians and I spoke to some decision makers, I spoke to some everybody from grassroots up, from Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England, all over England, East Anglia, hair coursing, hair poaching, everything. And it's not just foxhounds I'm talking about, it's dogs in wildlife management. So that can be lurchers, long dogs, terriers, gun dogs, hounds, bassets, beagles, I don't care, it's, it's dogs in wildlife management, which I think is a very sensible thing to do. So sorry, back to your <laughs> point, I think. I looked around and I realised that nothing was going on behind the scenes. Well, they will say things are going on behind the scenes, but you, you couldn't see what they were. Can we go back to that, that leech hunting webinar? So our news editor at the time, Ben O'Rourke, watched it told me afterwards it was three hours of his life he was never going to get back. It was the most boring webinar he had had the misfortune to watch. He said there was nothing he could see that was illegal about it. Now, as I see it, the hunting office ordered it to be taken down by the antis. They, they posted it publicly, and, and the hunting office wanted it taken down because of copyright. And the moment they did that, they made it a legitimate media target. They made it interesting uh, and and thereafter it was almost inevitable that some judge would find Mark Hankinson guilty of something so uh, is it is it a sort of sense of ineptitude or is a sense of uh, a laziness or you know what what is it you're fighting back against and 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 what is it that you could possibly do that a larger organization can't do I, I think it's um, back to that Hankinson or sorry the leaked webinar uh, decision to remove it and therefore remove copyright and, and open up scrutiny. Uh, <laughs> difficult to say what would I have done at the time. I couldn't tell you, I don't know the evidence, but the proof is in the pudding and it's answered itself. So when Hankinson did appeal, I think most people thought, what are you doing? You're going to give us a double whammy here. You're going to get really bad PR now and then you're going to get double bad PR when you don't succeed next time round. But he did. And so the proof's in the pudding that actually, had you gone straight in, arms flailing, with the message that he was uh, completely in the clear, and what he was saying was to be interpreted different ways. Well, no, well, I mean, we, he, he did nothing wrong. I mean, have, you, have you watched the webinar? Mm. Uh, yes, I've, well, I've read so, the transcript so, of it, yeah. Okay, so there, there's a bit where he says, you know, it would be wise to avoid trouble with the antis, but yeah. that, that is not the same as encouraging people to go hunting foxes. That, well, it, that, was the, that was the worst thing we could find. Well, I think that was the basis on which he was exonerated, as far as I see it. Well, I hope so. W was, was that he was just saying the smokescreen was to smokescreen anti so they couldn't disrupt our legal activity. I mean, I totally agree with him. And his point is correct, has been proved true. But I think where I got sufficiently bothered to actually get involved and do something as somebody that's hunted with hounds all my life, uh, watching it getting flushed down the swanee, with no fight, and my problem is the lack of fight and the lack of effective fight. So I thought, being an ex-military guy myself, back to the old principle of minimum force, I will put in the minimum force required to get this job done. And that might be quite a lot of force, because if it's the minimum force, that's where I'll go. And so I have been asking some searching questions of people and what they're doing politically, who they are lobbying, to what end, and as a result of that, I've gone off and done Hunting Kind and joined up with This Is Hunting UK. So we've now got, without disclosing figures, because that's never great if you're in the military, like I've got 10 people in my army, you know, you're beaten. Um, we've got over 50,000 people, and that's as close as I'll leave it, which is more people, including myself, because I'm one, that are members of the Countryside Alliance. 
Okay. So you, you feel you have a, a, a weight of, of, of sentiment behind you. Um, what can you do that the hunting office can't do? I can do what I have been doing, which is in Northern Ireland, this, where are we? this time last year, some unfortunately named fellow called John Blair. Another North, Blair. Another Blair. Just what we needed. Just another son of Blair comes forward into Northern Ireland, backed up by the League Against Cruel Sports, with a huge, great survey behind him, which involved people from Ecuador, Guatemala, Brazil, and New Jersey. And he comes steaming into Stormont in Northern Ireland, goes, 85% of the world, or 85% of my survey, thinks that hunting with hounds is horrendous, and it's got to stop. So the, it got picked up by the speaker, and he processed the bill. And so you ended up in a situation where it was a straight First time it's happened since 2004. It was a straight battle in court, or oh, sorry, in Parliament, between d is hunting okay or is it not okay? It wasn't talking about trail hunting, it was just pure hunting. And we won. And a lot of people don't know that. And it's the best bit of hunting news that has happened in 20 years. And it really is. We mostly won. I mean, we, yes, can we have a little round of applause for that? We did win, you're right, we won. We didn't win after a full debate in Stormont. We, we won partly on procedure because they said, look, there's not enough support for this bill, we're going to drop it. And we still have the problem that John Blair was re-elected in the May elections. He's back, he's re-announced his bill, yeah. uh, and it all depends now on Sinn Féin and whether they will back the countryside. Sinn Féin being a little bit franchise, north and south, sure. one side they're back, fox hunting, one side they don't. Yeah. But let it, let, let it give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, wins what, a win. What are you doing now for Northern Ireland to stop this next bill from happening? Well, it, well, you're right in that the thing that swung it was Sinn Féin down south. But we said to the guys in, in Dublin, you look at the value of this equine pound, you're racing, you're breeding, you're stock, you're lot, and you go and ban fun, fox hunting in Northern Ireland, and you want to be a United Ireland, you know, it doesn't look great, so vote against it, which they clocked that and they did. I mean, I'll take any excuse, I'll take any reason, I don't care about the ideology, as long as people are getting the message and they're happy to promote that message that fox hunting and wildlife management with dogs is okay, then I'm, I'm happy either way. So you reckon you have, or do you reckon you will have, an effective opposition to John Blair's bill in Northern Ireland? Well, it's hard to get hunting people going. And it's hard to get rural people going. I know I'm one of them, and we're all one of them. And we like to manage and look after the animals that we have done for generations in peace as free people and so we're not massive rabid campaigning people but you're getting well it stirred me and i'm quite a quiet person and it stirred don whiteman and he's a pretty genuinely sane and reasonable and decent guy and so people are getting cheesed off with a lot of things and it's not just hunting it's not just rural field sports it's farming it's the whole sector Rural Britain. Can I just carry on down that, the, the hunting route because the other battle you're fighting is in Scotland where uh, the uh, League Against Cruel Sports original act that banned fox hunting clearly didn't work so they've come back for a second go uh, and uh, you are now fighting that. Yeah, very much so. In, in Scotland they uh, put forward a bill to reduce... At the moment in Scotland, as you know, all they can do is use a full pack of hounds, so let's say 30 or 15 couple, whatever can use a full pack of hounds to flush cover to be shot by a line of guns. That's, that's what they do. Uh, and there are professional foot packs that are mounted, not professional packs, that, that, that do that. And so the recent law, or bill, is to reduce that number from whatever it might be down to two hounds. So they say you can still catch a fox potentially with a hound, but there's only two of them are allowed to do it. And the, the bite from two is significantly less painful than a bite from two as part of 30. Well, that logic doesn't really play a part in it, does it? No. But, uh, are they bringing it into line with the English system? Is that the idea? I think they... Well, one of their... A key part in their bill is they're banning trail... The possibility of trail hunting. Because the trouble with the English ban is that that didn't work either, did Exactly. It? So they've clocked that one. They've realised trail hunting could be seen as a loophole. And therefore, they're, they're doing it all in one go. It's exactly what John Blair tried to do in Northern Ireland. And probably because of that, because it had the trail hunting thing in, which is like, how do you ban trail hunting? It's a it's completely legal thing to do. Uh, he tripped himself up in Ireland. That was another factor. It does, it does seem to me that, that 
you know, when they don't get something they want, they push for something else, they push for something else. That, you know, yeah. the people who want to ban lead shot are actually the people who want to ban guns. The people who want yeah. to ban yeah. fox hunting are the people who want to ban pet ownership, don't they? Yeah. Um, so we are fighting a pretty ideological battle here. We are. And, and, and the way to fight that, as far as I see, it's only my little tin pot approach, but, you know, I hear what you're doing, I know what you're doing, and Dom and all these other guys. You know, I'm sick of sitting in the corner of a ring getting punched in the face repeatedly and never seeing any sign of, I don't want the towel thrown in. I'm just seeing no sign of any fight back because I'm, I'm, I'm third partying my fight to organizations that have got no trousers and no fight. Well, well, let's just break that down a little bit. I mean, there are many elements to this fight. There's mm -hmm. the media fight, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's the, the social license, whether mm -hmm. society thinks it's okay that we go hunting or shooting. There's the political fight. There's the, the regional government and even, you know, influencing the police. So there's quite a lot we do in this area, isn't there? Are you going in on any particular ones of those or are you trying to spread your attack? I think it's narrowed down to about three things, if I can mention, and, the, and, then, and then refine those into a further two. The three things are animal welfare slash wildlife management. So I'm not talking about shooting huge numbers or killing huge numbers for the fun of it. I'm talking about wildlife management and the science behind wildlife management. That's one thing. The second one is the minority right of the minority rural Brit, which we are, to be able to conduct activities and continue our traditions, dread the word, pastimes, activity, our, our way of life. And our way of life as ordinary decent people in a free democracy is under the Equalities Act. It's just as, it's just as logical to be a minority of rural Brits as it is to be a minority of, of let's say, a member of a synagogue. That, that's a minority too. And I totally respect that, and I want to be totally respected too. That's the second one, sorry. sorry. Go and, on, and go on, the, do the rest. The third one's the cultural heritage. So you've got UNESCO, for example, uh, looking at the cultural heritage of the rural Brit, in one sense. And they're saying, you know, you guys are in cave paintings, running around chasing after deer with dogs. Uh, it's probably a pretty long ingrained part of your cultural heritage that you hunt and you take part in these activities, and it's become a ritual, a custom, a, a way of life. Okay, th those are the battlefields, but yeah. the, the weapons, particularly weapons. politics, media, PR. regional government, police, yeah. judiciary, what, yeah. what, how, are you, how are you approaching those? PR, getting it into the public domain. Media. Make, be, being unafraid to say, you know, like being loud and proud or whatever, I mean, I'm really straying into territory, I don't know anything about that kind of thing. You're not a natural lovey, are you? I'm not a lateral level, no, I'm a soldier, and I'm a guy that hunts, and that's who I am, and, uh, and that's that. But I uh, think that that's where a lot of it needs to be put in, is to say, yeah, I hunt. I mean, I went to this conference like this in Budapest last year, the International Conference of Hunting. Amazing. I mean, just incredible. Like two this, two but, and a half huge. million people went. Was it? Was it? It was huge, yes. Incredible. And there, there's not one person saying, you know, loads of children, school kids, it's just normal to hunt there. And nobody's, nobody's shying away saying at the school gate, you know, hi, what do you do? Hi, my name's Ed and I'm a really keen fox hunter. I'd be, I wouldn't be allowed to take my kids to school. You know, I'd, I'd offend somebody. I, I, I'm not allowed to say it and I think that's wrong. Okay, call to action. What do you want people to do about hunting kind? I think um, now is a very critical moment. We've just had old Boris left the stage, and I, well, we'll leave politics to one side. Um, I had hoped that this would be a good chance, his government, to be able to get our points of view across, our scientific points of view about hunting, and say, come on, Boris, let's get these laws reviewed. Note, I've never used the word repeal, and I never will. Okay, so just, I'm not talking about repealing anything. I'm talking about having law reviewed on very good evidence that it was a really poor law and we might be able to do something with it. Yeah, okay, this is what you want done. What, sorry, what I mean is what would you like these guys to do here in the audience? Do they sign up for Hunting Kind online or, or uh, do they come and see kind. you over here on the Field Sports Nation table in the corner? That's incredibly kind, Charlie. I, I take a right prompt. Um, <laughs> but thank you. No, Hunting Kind is just a website that is linked. I am linked to This Is Hunting UK, James Barclay's old mob. 50,000 people, 
we'd love it to be 500,000 people because when we've got 500,000 people clicking on the, you just go on the site and go, I like lurchers, terriers, gun dogs, scent hounds, sight hounds. You put your thumbprint, your paw print next to that, and it's another number with an address, and we just go, okay. So instead of saying, I've got more than 50,000 people, I'd like to say, I've got half a million, because that's what we're going to need.